So the U.S. government intends to ban Hong Kong's leader from the APEC summit in San Francisco. Let me put this nonsense into perspective for you. This ridiculous farce harks back to 2020, when the U.S. government put John Lee and several other Hong Kong officials on its sanctimonious sanctions list. The self-appointed sheriff of the world and supreme authority on what laws any country can and can't have wanted to make a show of punishing these individuals over whom it has zero authority or jurisdiction. They were singled out for their role in implementing and enforcing the national security law that Beijing imposed on Hong Kong following the anti-government, anti-China protest chaos that consumed the city in 2019. Li, now Hong Kong's chief executive, was the top official in charge of security back then and thus identified by the high priests of hypocrisy in Washington as a human rights violator in need of American frontier justice for his brutal crackdown on the protest movement. Fun fact, not a single person was killed by police despite well over a year of rioting, mob violence and anarchy on the streets in the name of democracy. How many Americans died in protests and political unrest the same year they sanctioned Lee? Just Google it. Fast forward to the present day and now, in a fit of infantile pettiness and sheer spite, the US government wants to shut Lee out of the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum to be held in San Francisco in November. The utterly false narrative that Washington and its ever-compliant Anglo-Saxon vassal states are peddling is that John Lee is some kind of tin pot tyrant running a bloodthirsty regime here. All of us poor natives are hiding in our homes, living in terror of police batons and bullets, apparently. Seriously, have you been to Hong Kong lately? Let's compare John Lee's murderous track record with those of American leaders and may the best man win. According to the latest research by Brown University, a hallowed US institution, the wars waged by Washington and fueled by its interventionist policies over the past two decades alone have left at least 4.5 million people dead. Think about that number, 4.5 million dead across Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Syria and Yemen. And we're still counting the cost today. According to the same research, 7.6 million children aged below five in these countries are starving as we speak. Is anyone holding American leaders to account? Anyone sanctioning them for this modern day genocide? You know what's happening here, right? Hong Kong is collateral damage, an easy target for the US as it seeks to undermine China in every way it can. So Hong Kong is being bullied. That's why the US consulate here, instead of engaging in diplomacy and making rather than breaking local connections, feels entitled to abuse the city's hospitality. One example of that is how the consulate lights candles at its windows every year on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square crackdown. This blatant departure from diplomatic protocol could perhaps be justified if it were driven by genuine mourning for the victims or concern that many Hong Kongers can no longer hold their annual candlelight vigils as a consequence of 2019. But no, it's just pure American theater, as if they care a hoot up in Washington about Chinese lives when they're like, whatever, about the blood of 4.5 million people on their hands. You know what's the best way to get a bully off your back? By standing up to them, or better still, giving them a taste of their own medicine. For starters, Hong Kong authorities should hold tit-for-tat candlelight vigils for every major atrocity the US government has perpetrated since 1989. No need to be petty and go back any further in modern history, but I'll bet we have so many anniversaries that we run out of candles. Let's see how they like them apples.